Yo, what up everyone? Today I got another weapon guide for you guys. You were asking for a crossbow guide? So here it is. The crossbow is basically a medieval single shot shotgun and it comes with the benefit of having an about 32 meter one tap range to the chest. It makes the enemies bleed, it is strong against the AI and bosses at the same time, is silent and on top of that you can pick up its projectiles and reuse them. We're gonna take a quick look at its stats real quick. Like you can see here, it's silent, it deals heavy bleed, deals 247 damage, and the top middle, in case you're wondering what that is, it's the range after which the projectile starts dropping. For the normal ammo, it is 12 meters. And like you can see here, the crossbow only has a 150 meters per second bullet velocity, which makes range shots kinda hard, but at the same time, very rewarding once you get used to it. Now we are going to talk about traits. Honestly, there's only one trait which is in my opinion needed when you play crossbow. It is a bolt thrower. What does it do? It increases your reload speed on the crossbow, the whole rebolting animation. I will show you quick what it looks like when you don't have bolt thrower and what it does when you have bolt thrower in a direct comparison. You can play crossbow without bolt thrower, but if you have three points left and you want to play crossbow, I highly recommend investing them into bolt thrower since it does speed up your reload animation by quite a bit. Okay, let's talk about the special ammo. At this point I want to mention that you can do a 50-50 split if desired on your special ammunition while playing crossbow. First of all, we have the shot bolt, which is in my opinion the best ammo type for the crossbow. The shot bolt is a bolt with a shotgun shell attached at the bolt's tip, which gets triggered on impact and deals 455 damage. This feature means that the shot bolt does have an infinite one tap range as long as you manage to hit your target in the head or in the upper torso. It comes with the drawback of having more bullet drop, a lower velocity and you cannot reuse the bolt since it gets destroyed on impact. The second special ammo type is what I like to call the action movie ammo. It's the explosive bolt. Like the name says already, it shoots explosive bolts. Basically tiny dynamites which explode on impact. It only deals 221 damage, which does one shot, but only on direct impact. While it does have a lot of drawbacks, like an even more punishing bullet drop and an even lower velocity, it comes with a huge benefit of dealing AOE area of effect damage, which means it comes with a lot of utility uses. For example, you can damage hunters around corners who are seeking cover, you can splash damage multiple players at once and overall are able to apply pressure in situations in which most weapons couldn't. The explosive bolt obviously also suffers from the bolt being destroyed on impact and such is not reusable. Keep in mind that explosive bolts do get affected by bulwark. Bulwark reduces explosive damage by 50% which can make this ammo type very unfun to play depending on what perks your enemy team is running. At the same time though, my most fun crossbow games have always been with explosive bolts since you do feel like the protagonist in an action movie when it works. Okay, now I'm gonna jump into some games here. Also I'd like, uh, now we're gonna jump into some games here, I will showcase all three ammo types and give you some play-by-play -play commentary so you do understand what I'm doing here and get a better understanding of how to use a crossbow. A small tip here before we jump into the actual gameplay commentary. Overall, when playing crossbow, always continue playing after a shot, like once you shoot, as if you would have missed the shot. The crossbow does have low velocity, low bullet travel time, which means your enemies quite often get the time to shoot back at you. So keep moving, don't stand still. <clears throat> Overall, not just crossbow specific, when you're playing a close quarter loadout and you arrive at a boss layer, somebody is doing the boss, it's always a good idea to use that moment to push the layer and abuse the chaos that is happening. You know, they're fighting the boss, they're not fully concentrated to get into one tap range and just skip the part where you have to like shoot with your pistol. Right now, I'm just roaming around the layer real quick to see if they have noticed the boss has turned red and I can maybe 
catch somebody leaving the layer with a quick one tap. Sadly, I do miss my shot here, but this is a good example how the crossbow basically just plays like a Romero in close quarter distance. Just the can't warbing. But you see here, I jump out of the window, do the wheel out, hear multiple people rushing me, get one kill, get the second one here with fanning, kind of lucky on that one. Instantly reload my crossbow, hold the angle. Quite often it's a good idea in those situations to just hold the angle for a second and prioritize reloading your weapon over healing. Since it doesn't make a difference if you get caught while healing while not being able to shoot back. Here we get another one tap and wipe the aftermath team. That went by really quick. I'm gonna continue looting here and finishing the boss. I'm gonna skip to the next fight here once the banishment has happened. A nice benefit that the normal builds have over the other special ammo types is that even if you don't kill your target due to an arm or leg hit, it still applies heavy bleed to your enemy, which usually will stop them from pushing you. Like you see here, she's fairly committed to like rushing the layer. I hit her, she's bleeding. She has to immediately stop the bleeding since it deals quite a bit of damage and completely negates the push. I do get tagged here and cannot finish her off, but that is the benefit of playing the normal bolt. Like you can see here, you play the crossbow just like a normal shotgun with the benefit that you have like a 31, 32 meter one tap range. So you can just hold angles a little bit further back. I'm currently just waiting for them to push me to make use of my one tap range. We do get a little bit lucky here. They step into my trap and I get a free kill here. Now I do have a buddy to play from or to play for and have only two more enemies to worry about. Also as a little side note here, you can see how much the enemy team is respecting me. They don't want to mess with my crossbow because they know if they overextend, if they play too aggressive here, I can easily turn that into a 1v1 since 30 meters within a compound is actually quite some range. I'm doing another scan here, I see that they are both kind of together, one behind the boat, one more towards the little side roof. I decide, I decide to make a play happen here, play a little bit more aggressive. I hear her open the sliding door, I fall a little bit further back, since I do have the 30 meter one tap. She peeks, I do tag her, I hit her in the leg I think, or in the torso, lower torso. But she has to run away, she's heavy bleeding, so I basically get a 1v1 here. Can push her teammate, kill him. My fanning doesn't connect here, but you saw how she was completely taken out of the fight, even though I didn't kill her. Pretty huge if you ask me. Basically like playing Flechette, uh, Flechette ammo, but you actually do kill your enemies. Now that I'm in a 1v1, I'm obviously turning up the aggression here by a lot, since I do not want her to go for revives. I start tossing consumables at her. Now I'm starting to rotate towards her teammates, so she doesn't like out-rotate me and sneak a revive. Trying to locate her here since I do not have scan anymore. But my number one objective here is to like threaten my crossbow while at the same time not giving her the chance to revive her teammates. Now that I have spotted her, I'm placing Constantina trip mine on her teammate just in case she does have a necro. The other teammate is laying in Constantina already so I don't have to worry about that. I also find a firebomb here, which is kinda lucky. So I'm just gonna burn, rotate again through the layer, abusing the structure of the boss layer to like close distance, you know, can't get hit, just run through the layer, get closer, and start bullying her out of the compound. And my goal here is to close as much distance as possible on her without 
her being able to like get long range shots on me. As a side note here, if she wouldn't have backed up here, I would have simply played the body and would have waited for her to choke bomb a teammate. But like, uh, but like you can see, she did back off. She respects my one tap range. She doesn't want to mess with my crossbow in a 1v1 within the compound. So I'm closing my distance again here. She starts trying to wallbang me. I just don't really care about it to be honest. But I do hear her backing off even further since she's trying to escape my one tap range again. I hear her backing off. I'm just gonna continue pressuring her, continue like staying in my danger zone, the 30 meter radius. Continue pushing here, using hard cover efficiently. I can't hear right now, don't know exactly where she is, so I'm using a dynamite just as a decoy to like make a move. She actually does believe that it is an actual decoy, ignores it, dies to it. Kinda lucky, but I think we would have ended the fight here with our crossbow anyways. Overall, I think this fight was a great example how strong the normal bolts can be and how much pressure they can apply in a compound fight. Now I'm gonna showcase a shot put for a little bit. We have two highlights in specific. Little advice at the beginning. When you play shot put, I would always go for double shot put ammunition. I wouldn't go like a 50 50 or anything like that. If you pair it with expo bolts, you don't have enough shot put to play. And shot put and normal bolt is being played in the same way. Just that the shot put is more potent, in my opinion, has a higher skill ceiling. And, like I said, has the infinite one tap range due to the shotgun shell at the end of the build. Little summary here. I have banished the boss and I am being sieged by a trio. We are kinda like using the shot board in close quarter distance. You will see the benefits in comparison to the normal board in the next two highlights here. And let's jump into the commentary. Currently, I'm just waiting for one of them to finally commit to the bush. I hear that somebody is disarming one of my traps at the back side door, so I'm immediately going over there to take my 1v1. Sadly I do miss my shot here, but it doesn't matter, we go on. Here you see a benefit of the shot bolt. I can even hold crack peaks since it being a shotgun shell at the end even allows me to like hit corners or thin walls and wallbang through them. Right now I'm just trying to like dance in between my enemies and not stand still. As long as I'm moving, I'm less predictable, if that makes sense. In chaotic fights like that, you always want to like stay on the move, because it's quite likely that people will eventually commit to a push, and by you constantly moving, it's harder for them to predict where you are. Right now I see in scans that this enemy is isolated. Overall, like you see here, it's always a good idea to go for random warmings just to make people on the other side feel super uncomfortable and like here, for example, back off. Right here you see, you know, I hit him with a shot bolt, it was a safe kill. Immediately fall back, go into the layer. Get a really nice upper headshot here, to be quite honest. Fall back, reload my shot bolt, heal up. Play the bounty here. Fall back the revive and go back into a 1v1 here. I listen real quick here in the middle of the layer, I push here, aim at her, sadly she aim punches me, so I jump down, reload again, see if she's going for another revive, she doesn't, I heal up, push up again, and right here, even though she's really close, the shot bolt allowed me to kill her here, meanwhile, I think if I had a normal bolt here, I would have like traded with her here because I would have hit her in the arm. Meanwhile with a shot bolt I get the full benefit of playing shotgun and get my one tap. In the second game I want to highlight how good the shot bolt is in comparison to the normal bolt and highlight the warbling capabilities especially in compound fights. Little summary here, I'm getting pushed while doing the boss. I prepared accordingly, I had some traps placed in the lobby area and they reward me with an easy entry kill. I hear another player in the corner, healing, or he has healed. I know where he is. So, since I have shot bolt, I am threatening a warbang here. Even though I didn't get the kill, 
I was still able to apply a lot of pressure and make them feel uncomfortable and stressed out. I could not have done that with a normal crossbow and even with a good secondary like the uppercut. I would have had to headshot him and probably not be as threatening. Now I'm going in to continue the fight. I hear footsteps above me. I see my enemy, I shoot him in the legs here. But since I basically have a shotgun, I do get the one tip anyways. I'm gonna turn up the aggression here since I'm now on a 1v1 and I don't want him to go for revives. I hear him running through the lair. Luckily he misses his shotgun shot here in a bit on me. I try to go for an orbit and miss, but just by doing so I apply a lot of pressure mentally on him. So instead of going for the smart play here and go for the revive, he just wants to get out of the lair and runs outside. I get another nice kill here, finish the fight, wipe the team. Overall you saw how me simply being able to threaten warbings with technically a shotgun made them panic a lot and do a lot of mistakes back to back. Also the second kill we got on the player upstairs. I most likely would not have gotten that one with normal bolts since limp damage reduces the amount of damage you take by a lot. Meanwhile, with the shot bolt, I get the full shotgun benefit and get the one tap and am able to finish the fight because of it. Here, another quick illustration how good the warping capability on the shot bolt can be. I'm defending the layer here against the trio, just so you know what's going on. Here, I missed my shot, but I saw her strafing to the right, so I'm assuming she will be holding the window to the direct right of that entrance. Like you saw here, with a normal bolt, I would have been like majorly screwed here, but since I do have a shot bolt, I am much more dangerous in close quarter combat, since sin walls like that, I can simply warbang and get my one taps. Overall, the shot bolt feels really reliable in close quarter combat to get your one taps, especially when people ADS at you. If you hit them in the arm, you still get your one tap on the normal crossbow, you usually don't. Okay, last but not least, we are looking at the explosive bolts. Little piece of advice here, like I said earlier, explosive bolts get heavily nerfed by Bulwark, so I personally usually run it in a 50-50 split, half normal, half explosive. If you want to commit to the meme, run full explosives, go ahead, but be aware that a singular person with Bulwark could ruin all the fun for you. Quick summary here. I'm arriving at the boss while somebody is already doing it, so I'm gonna try to get close and bully them with my explosive bolts while they are fighting the boss. I'm scouting the area real quick to see if anyone else is outside. I don't see anyone, so I commit to the push. I heard that somebody directly above me got hit by the assassin, that means he took quite a bit of damage and is bleeding. So I'm using my extra damage here to get an easy kill. Things are going really quick here, I reload. I get picked by another team out of that outside building. Tag him, makes them back off. Continue my push on the boss layer team. I hear that they are going for a revive up there. Re-kill the revive. Now I swap over to normal boat since I'm going into close quarter range. I don't want to splash damage myself. Push here. Sadly I miss, but... Basically saw here how good explosive ammo is. Once people are in a building or like in a closed area, you can just bully them with AOE damage and win the fight like that. Overall, when playing explosive bolts, don't be scared to not go for direct hits, but use your environment to damage your opponents. Like you saw there, I didn't see him directly, but I just shot the wall directly above him to deal as much damage as possible, which ended up with me killing them. But even if I don't get the kill there, this would have allowed me to push, since both of them would have been like down 80 to 100 HP at the very least. Even though I'm out of expo boots here, I'm gonna show you guys how the rest of the fight went. It's another good showcase how good normal boots actually are and why I prefer running 50-50 on the crossbow. Like you saw here, two of them were holding the garden gate. I hit one of them, he heavy bleeds, he has to run away. Second one peaks. I get another 1v1 since his teammate had to run. I hit him, he bleeds out. 
I get a kill without being contested. I'm gonna like fast forward here real quick. Don't say we're just really passive, not much is happening. I'm gonna look for Lantern here, try to like burn their teammate, so something is happening. See, he gets a burn here, they so he start throwing choke bombs. I get a rough idea where they are. Try to shoot the choke bomb here. Obviously didn't work, but might as well try. I'm gonna start rotating around the fire. Here's someone to my right, try to isolate that one one. Here's another benefit of the normal shot bolt. A uh, shot bolt, the normal crossbow bolt, sorry. I tag him here. Didn't get the one tap since I shot him in the arm, but he's bleeding right now. Which allows me to just continue pushing and basically kill him. Even though he was still alive, he was basically dead already. Now we're in a 1v1, at least I assume we're in a 1v1. I take the high ground here, clap on top of the little dog cage here, get a nice headshot. I did check if the boss was still red, and it was, so I know they have revived the Monroe. I'm assuming he's sitting behind the hedges where I killed him, because I didn't hear any movement at all. I shoot my crossbow, he peeks me, I know now that he does have a shotgun. That is why I'm rotating here to the left, climb on top of the hedge to get an off angle. He re-peeks, I get my kill, and we have won the fight. In my opinion, even though this was not a fully explosive bold game, it showcases really well why, in my opinion, it's much more important to like run 50-50 on the crossbow. Most of those kills on the second team would have been really hard to pull off if I had only explosive arrows. Now, in the second game, I'm gonna show you guys how good expert bolts are when you are defending a boss layer, and how good the splash damage can be, and how creative you can get with it. Quick summary here again. I'm in the layer, I know that there's a full-on team outside. I'm waiting for the management to finish, so I get a better idea where everybody is positioned. Once I have the bounty, I'm gonna start attacking the outside team. I do a scan here and see that there are two players in the long hallway towards the east side. I decide to immediately push that since long hallways, narrow hallways are great for splash damage. I peek the door here, directly hit the first player get my kill, but I also have splash damage the other player, see that he's standing still healing, shoots the ceiling above him, get my second kill and immediately turns it into a 1v1 scenario. Here's them pushing above me, use my scan here to figure out exactly where they are, here they are pushing down the stairs, wait for him, and directly impact him with the explore, and finish the fight. They had no idea that I had explosive arrows yet, or explosive bolts while they were pushing, and I caught them completely off guard. Usually their positioning wouldn't have been too terrible, to be completely honest, but simply by having the ability to like splash damage them immediately, I completely outplayed them, like you saw here, I showed to my viewers, I shot the ceiling above him, and managed to quickly finish the fight here. Overall, like you saw, explosive boots are insanely fun to play. You can get super creative with them. But this is it for my crossbow guide. I hope I was able to give you a good understanding on how to play the specific ammo types. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section. I'll see you guys on the next video and thank you for watching.